Good morning and welcome to worship at St. Andrew's United Church in Truro, Nova Scotia for May the 16th. My name is Reverend Shannon McLean and together with the congregation we work really hard to be an affirming congregation. That means that whoever you are, whatever your background, wherever you come from, we really value your gifts and want you to feel welcome when you join us. Today is Pentecost. Pentecost is the birthday of the Christian Church. If you're part of our St. Andrew's family, you might notice that today I have a few guest stars helping to lead worship. Since it's the birthday of the church, we thought maybe we should have a little bit of extra fun today. So I want to say thanks to Janine and Woody, Wendy and John, Joanna and Jennifer, Jan, Grace, and Dawn. You'll see them a little bit later in the service. So let's prepare ourselves for worship with our centering song. begin our worship this morning by acknowledging that we are in the Peace and Friendship Treaties territory. The land on which we are gathered, live, and worship is the traditional territory of the Mi'kmaq and Wabanaki Confederacy people. May we live with respect on this land and in peace and friendship with its people. May it be so. Please join me in our call to worship. Come with your celebrations and your joys. Come with your dreams for the Church of Jesus Christ. Prepare to enter God's dream for us. We come to offer up the gifts of our lives and to receive the power of the Spirit in our lives. Let us worship God. So today is Pentecost and probably I should be wearing red but anybody who knows me knows that I hate red, and so I'm not. <laughs> but happy birthday, church. It's an exciting day. Now, over the past few weeks in our scripture, we've been hearing stories about Jesus and the disciples. First, we were hearing stories about how the disciples encountered Jesus leading up to his death and resurrection. And then we've moved on to hear some of the stories about how they encountered Jesus after his resurrection. Our story today is about how God's Holy Spirit came upon those who had gathered. Now, one of the ways that we talk about the Holy Spirit is as fire, which is why some people wear red. This is a fire that fills us with warmth and energy, fills us with passion. And as we light the Christ candle today, think of the role of the Holy Spirit in your own lives. Let us pray. Gracious God, loving host, even before we knew you, you invited us in and made us welcome. Before we opened our hearts and learned to love, you had opened your heart to us. Open our hearts so that we may encounter you in our siblings and in all your people, especially those so different from us. Open our spirits to your spirit. God, you invite us into an adventure of faith. You knock down the walls that we build and you teach us a new language of prayer and faith. Oh God, you love all people 
Warm us in your hospitality. Light a fire of passion within us to spread your good news and bring your justice to the world. Amen. scripture. Our sacred story for this week is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. It's the story of Pentecost, and I'm going to read it to you from the translation of the Bible called The Message. 
When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all gathered together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, a gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. And then, like wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks. And they started to speak in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. There were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then, devout pilgrims from all over the world. When they heard the sound, they came running. Then, when they heard one after another their own mother tongue being spoken, they were thunderstruck. They couldn't for the life of them figure out what was going on. They kept saying, aren't these all Galileans? How come we're hearing them talk in our various different mother tongues? Parthians, Medes, Alamites, visitors from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, immigrants from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, even Cretans and Arabs, they're speaking our language, describing God's mighty works. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make heads or tails of any of it. They talked back and forth, confused. What's going on here? Others joked, they're drunk on cheap wine. That's when Peter stood up and backed by the other 11, spoke with a bold urgency. Fellow Jews, all who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully so that you get this story straight. These people aren't drunk, as some of you might suspect. They haven't even had time to get drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. This is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy, also your daughters. Your young men will see visions and your old men dream dreams. When the time comes, I'll pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both, and they'll prophesy. I'll set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billowing smoke, the sun turning black and the moon blood red. Before the day of the Lord arrives, the day tremendous and marvelous. And whoever calls out for help to me, God will be saved. Amen. Today, may we hear what the Spirit is truly saying to the church through this scripture, as well as the dramatic presentation. In our play, we have some ordinary, although very stereotypical folks who go to visit a prophet. They go to the prophet to find ways that they can faithfully fill their churches with the Holy Spirit of God but their own agendas get in the way. Warning, you might see a little bit of yourself in some of these characters, but don't be scared to laugh at them and ourselves. Threaded through the dialogue is the central theme that we are called to be a people of mission turned outward and that each of us should be striving for a deep transforming faith that flows into outreach. That's our job as we work together for God's mission in the earth, on the earth. The prophet in our play never gives up trying to light the church on fire with God's spirit. And the prophet blesses each person as they go on their way and concludes by blessing all of us in the congregation. Please enjoy Touched by Fire.
fire. It leaps and dances. It warms the cold and nudges the unmoving to action. Wherever the risen Christ is among us, look for fire. Look for tongues of flames reaching out to touch Christians with lively faith and a spirit of hope. Whenever this risen Christ is among us, look for tongues of flames. Reaching out from Christians from the church, touching a cynical, unbelieving world. Look for fire in the church that is marked by the spirit of Jesus Christ. I am the prophet. I live among the people. I point the way to the spirit of Jesus Christ who moves among us. I help the people listen to the wisdom of God. Over the ages, I've been in bishops and moderators, in hymn writers and poets. I've encouraged ordinary Christians to be open and faithful over the ages. Today, we listen for the Spirit's presence in our church. Hello, my name is Reverend James Folded Hands, and I'm the minister of St. Big and Bustling United Church down the way. Well, we would like it to be big and bustling, but we're always short of money and some are getting rather tired. Hello, Reverend. Do you come seeking some help? I want to see my church thrive. I pray about it. I go to a lot of meetings. I work hard on my sermons. I do my continuing education faithfully. I live a spotless life. Sounds good so far. Then too, our church is very up to date. We have marvelous graphics for our Sunday bulletin. We use the latest technology. Recently, we put in a new phone system. But the church is not full. And sometimes my people get downright cranky with one another. I think something's missing. What is it that God wants from your church? What kind of church are you called to be? I want it to be thriving, pews full, choirs singing marvelous anthems, a lot of people at Bible study. What do you suppose God's dream is for you and your people? I'm sure it is to fill the church with all the bills paid. Doesn't it say that somewhere in 2 Corinthians? How is it to grow full? I don't know. We have greeters at the door for newcomers, and we have nice welcome packages. But how do you tell the people about your faith? Well, we have a church sign, and that cost a lot. But do you speak of your faith in words and deeds? Oh, probably. We have a nice parking lot with many spaces for visitors. What more do we need? You need a blessing. May the fire of the Spirit bring passion to your leadership and enliven your worship. May the wind of the Spirit blow through your church, moving your congregants to look out into the world. Oh, right. I'm Jenny Sameway. Yes, and I'm Harry Von Don Rock the Boat. Welcome to the Prophet's Place. What do you seek? 
we need help with our church. It seems to be seriously off the rails. That sounds pretty serious. Yes, it is. We need to get more people involved. I'm sure that's part of God's dream for your church, too. Yes, we like kids and youth. Mind you, we like them to sit quietly and behave themselves. And they should be properly dressed. Yes, and we want them to learn the good old hymns and to love communion the way we do. We'd like to get them ready to take our place on committees. You know, we're not as young as we used to be. How is the spirit of Jesus Christ filling you and changing you? What has that got to do with this? Well, now that you mention it, the Holy Spirit helps us make our budget and to find new committee members when people move away. Anything else? Well, I wish the Spirit would move people to give more and to attend more regularly. And you know, we don't need all these changes. Some of these new ministers insist on. We don't need this new music. We need to learn the good old hymns. We shouldn't be upsetting so many people either. We're not supposed to be hugging in church. Yes, and clapping. And male ministers really need to be in charge. People respond better to a man. <laughs> I can see why you're upset. Yes, and people don't want to be upset in church. They need peace and quiet after a stressful week. Where is the Spirit leading you in all of this? I'm sure the Spirit is leading us to recover the good old ways of faith. I'm sure. May the fire of the Spirit touch your certainties and your contentment and burn them away. May the wind of the Holy Spirit give you courage to change the world as the world has changed. She has the nerve. Welcome to my place, and you are... I'm Annie, fix the world. I was hoping to get your signature. Annie, you look out of breath. Right now, I have a petition, and I'm collecting signatures. You know, concerning the Upper Smolgarian issue. The Upper Smolgarian issue? Did you know that the people on the south side of the Bongo River in Upper Smolgaria are suffering from water pollution from Canadian manufacturing plants in Upper Smolgaria? And the Canadian government is doing nothing about it. You're pretty passionate about this. It's God's will that all people should know justice and health. True. What are you doing to touch people around you? I'm recycling paper, all paper. I have a petition to the city council to expand recycling options. But Annie, has the fire of the spirit warmed your heart? Oh yes, I'm pushing the janitor to get rid of all noxious chemicals. Has your own life been transformed by the Spirit? Why, certainly. I'm now eating tofu and I brought veggie burgers to the church picnic. Annie, may the fire of the Spirit touch you so the gospel of Jesus Christ touches you deep in your own heart where your own hopes and fears are. May the wind of the Spirit blow through your caring and your wonderful causes so that you are known as a lover too. Hi, I'm Betty Busyfeet, the youth worker for the church. I'm in quite a rush. 
Do you have a minute? Why, yes. What is it you're so busy with, Betty? Well, I have lots of programs. Every Sunday evening, I have a fun night with the kids. We listen to music, play games, and of course, eat. Then once a month, we have a fun, 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 fun weekend. We bring lots of food. We don't have too much in the way of structure. We just go the way the spirit leads us. Does the spirit lead you? Oh, yes, we have a great time. Mind you, the spirit leads some off to go in the dark together and to do some things. Well, I won't go there. I have to be vigilant all the time. Is faith growing in your people? I think so. They never like to talk about these things. It makes them uncomfortable. I wait till they bring it up. But how does the spirit of Jesus Christ shape and change your young people? Well, we talk about dating and parents regularly. Does that count? Do you have a mission? Well, let me see. Last year, we had a car wash project. What was the purpose? Oh, we are saving up for a fun, 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 fun trip to Lost in the Woods Provincial Park. There must be a lot of stress for you in this. Oh dear, yes. I'm always afraid we will run out of food. Betty, may the fire of the Spirit touch you and your people so that you are truly can meet this Jesus Christ. May the wind of the Spirit stir you to talk about the gospel among yourselves and with your non-church friends. Oh, hello. I'm just trying to figure out which meeting I'm going to. Oh, you're Mrs. Many Meetings, I think. You've searched, served the church well, Mrs. Meetings. I take joy in serving. We're always raising money for something. Last year, we replaced the carpet in the church lounge. You know after the youth group had one of their fun, fun nights. Is there more? Definitely. The oven and the fridge in the church kitchen needs cleaning. There's always something. Does the spirit call you to do this? Absolutely. We hold two rummage sales a year. Does the Holy Spirit stir your women? Several groups meet monthly. Mind you, the membership hasn't changed for some time. People want to meet with their friends. How could you reach out? Well, we iron the tablecloths for the communion table. How does the Holy Spirit touch you? The Spirit gave us a new idea recently. Oh? Yes, we decided to change all the locks on the cupboards. Too many things had gone missing. What else do you seek to do? I hope you're not gonna suggest something more. We're all very busy. Mrs. Meetings, may the fire of the Spirit move you to talk about your faith with one another. 
May the holy winds of the Spirit open up your circles to welcome in new people. Welcome to my place. Do you come seeking something? I love music, and I'm always on the lookout for new music. What is it you seek in your life, Cindy? I don't know. I'm not sure what adults have to share. Sometimes church can be pretty boring, you know? It's so predictable. I could go through the service in my sleep, you know? And those ministers just go blah, blah, blah. I wonder if they feel it. Is it real for them? Do you feel Jesus the Christ is real for you, Cindy? Yes, but what? I wonder what I get out of this. Is it worth the effort? What does Jesus Christ ask you to give, Cindy? Give? I'm not sure, but I'd like some clues about where I'm going. I'd like to know if I'm safe in this world. I wish I had, I knew what the future held. I know. Christians over the ages have wished this. Is this, in this relationship or journey, what do you have to give to Christ? Give? None of my friends talk about giving. Or commitment. I understand, Cindy. And here is my prayer for you. May the fire of the Spirit wrap you in the love of God, for you are a child of God, Cindy. You are truly safe on this journey with Jesus Christ. May the wind of the Spirit stir you in gospel faith and a boldness in talking about that faith. Go and let the Spirit truly touch you. See you later. Well, hello there. I understand you're the prophet. Yes. Do you come seeking? Oh, I'm not really seeking. I'm just wondering about a few things. What is it you wonder about, Bill Cool? Well, I'm too busy, you know, to get really involved in a church. But I wonder what makes those people tick. I mean, what do they get out of this going to church week after week and meeting on a regular basis? I mean, I, I, I don't really need that. Um, but I was wondering. Bill, have you found a place where faith can grow in you and people share it with? Oh, I think faith is a private matter. Not something that I need. And with whom do you worship and praise? I think I could worship just about anywhere. On greens, fairways. I don't need to go to an actual church building. And how do you keep this fire alive in you? The fire of faith. It can be pretty lonely walking the way of faith alone. Yeah, I do get distracted at times. I, I miss a lot of pots, for example. But I'm not sure these church people are all they pretend to be. You know, I know a guy at work, and um, he goes to church on a regular basis, but he sure isn't perfect at work. Never mind the ones who aren't perfect, Bill. Is there fire in your own faith, in your life? I'm not sure about fire. I wouldn't want to get too emotional about this, after all. That can get you into a lot of trouble, too. Perhaps, Bill, you're ready to open your life, to receive. Most of all, the God of Jesus Christ has, has some gifts to give you. You know, I wouldn't mind having the energy and hope that I see in some Christians. I'd like the excitement I sense some Christians have just for life and loving. Bill, may you and your whole generation be touched by fire so that you may know the passion and the enthusiasm of the gospel. May the wind of the spirit blow away your caution that you can enter into and to both give and receive.
Indeed. Take this fire, the fire of sharing the good news, the fire embracing transformation and change, the fire of love, the fire of radical inclusion into the world. Amen. Join me now in our prayers of the people and the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come before you a people of saints and sinners, a people of humor, passion, and pain. First God, we give you thanks for all that you give us and express our gratitude in the offerings we share with your church. Bless these gifts that they may be used to answer the cries of the world. We pray that the Holy Spirit may touch our congregation and leaders again with your fire. 
May the wind of the Spirit blow through our meetings, our worship, and our living in the world. In this time of online worship and isolation, may you bless us with creativity and energy as we seek to be healthy and spirit-filled people. God, may we not fear change. Give us bold vision, blend it with gracious respect for one another. Bless us with a bold spirit so that we might share our faith stories with others so that we might share your good news with the world. Grant us hope and new excitement when we despair. Help us to remember, God, that you are a maker of miracles among us. And let us grow to be the gospel church that our ancestors dreamed of on that day so long ago. May we be the church you dream for us. And now we share with you the prayers on our hearts. Gather these, O God, and all our prayers, thankful that we may turn to you as we pray the prayer Jesus taught his friends. Our Father and Mother, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Indeed, take this fire the fire of sharing the good news, the fire embracing transformation and change, the fire of love, the fire of radical inclusion into the world. Amen.